By the way, did you see the, the Grizzlies? They're not afraid of tugging on LeBron's cape last night. Dylan Brooks, who there are players throughout history who will make a name by going after the best player. You know, Lance Stevenson, remember him with uh, LeBron? You know, blowing in his ear, like all these things. And I, for some reason, when I was talking to Jim Jackson yesterday on the show, who, by the way, is a wonderful analyst. So I was saying, I don't remember guys who were getting in LeBron's face. He goes, I did. Or Jordan's face. He goes, I did. Yeah, guys did that all the time. And then he started telling me, he goes, it rarely worked out well, but there were guys who got in Michael Jordan's face. Because I thought, man, there's real, there's a competitor, then there's disrespect. And Dylan Brooks is a good player. He's a nice player. But I don't think you would know him unless, you know, we were talking about him where he's calling out LeBron James. Uh, you know, Dylan, has, Dylan Brooks trying to create, you know, he's trying to be um, Draymond Green light. And uh, here's Dylan Brooks, the Grizzlies forward, uh, calling out LeBron James. You and LeBron have that exchange. There are people out there that say maybe maybe you shouldn't do that with one of the better players in the game. What, I guess what what were you thinking? I don't care. He's old. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, I was waiting for that. I was expecting him to do that game four, game five. He wanted to say something when I got my fourth foul. Um, he should have been saying that earlier on. Um, but, you know, I poke bears. Um... I don't respect no one until they come and give me 40. Um, so um, I pride myself on, you know, what I do is defense and taking on any challenge that's on the board. Okay. He's trying to bait LeBron, see what happens in game three. But, you know, he gets 15 a night, uh, does play defense, wants to play defense, not afraid of LeBron. Okay. It's just Memphis still leads the league in talking. I want to see results. But right now, they are the best team at talking. Yes, Todd? You can poke bears all you want, but there's something about poking like the biggest of the bears that I have a problem with, especially if you don't have any rings or any major accomplishments to show for it. It seems like there should be some minimal respect for the great greats of the game. I just had a problem with that, him being in LeBron's face like that. Thank you, Todd. But it would be a grizzly bear poking the bear. Thank you, Todd. Here's LeBron James on uh, last night's game. You know, I felt like we was prepared tonight. Um, we just didn't execute as well as we did in game one. Uh, of course, close to 48 minutes. Uh, so they made adjustments. We made some adjustments. And, you know, you, you tip your hat to them. They, they played a, a, well, a well of a game tonight. They did. They played a well of a game last night. Now it's tied at a game of peace. This is one of those games where I'm watching Anthony Davis, and it's not all on him. So he goes 13-8. and eight, And he's healthy. Like, it's... It, that's almost worse than him being injured, where you go, wait, AD get hurt? No, no, no. No. He blocked a few shots, but, uh, you know, offensively, 13 and 8. He played 38 minutes. And I thought, okay, I need a little bit more out of you. Yes, Marv. I'm going to give Triple J some credit. Defensive player of the year, he went to work on the defensive end last day against Anthony Davis. Okay, Jaron Jackson Jr. the third to us. Wasn't that your boy? Yeah, you love coming out? I know. When that draft, prior to the draft, I forget who we had on. And I go, you know who I like the most out of this draft? Jaron Jackson Jr. the third. He was like 18 coming out of Michigan State. Could shoot the three. And then, uh, you know, I watched Luca the highlights in, you know, in Europe. And I go, I don't know if he's going to be able to be that good in the NBA. And I watched Trey Young, and I thought, no, I don't know if he's going to be able to be that great in the NBA. I'm taking Jaron Jackson Jr. the third. It took a while, but, you know, he won an award. You know, has Luka won an award? He didn't. He hasn't won MVP. Well, he won Rookie of the Year, didn't he? Yeah, he he got that. Yeah, or did he and Trey split the award? I don't know. But Jaron Jackson got an award, a defensive uh, player of the year. Anybody want to invest in that stock over Luca with me? With Jaron Jackson Jr. the third? Yeah, Paul. Jaron Jackson may play in a finals before Luca does. Yeah, that's probably true. And, and he could steal one of those uh, Andre Iguodala style MVPs someday. Mm, okay. nice, nice player count there. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, what other poll questions do we have, Seaton? 
Well, we could do a couple Dylan Brooks poll questions. Dylan Brooks is more bark or bite. Uh, we could do Dylan Brooks is helping his team or hurting his team. Uh, I mean, it's not Draymond-like, but, but I think he aspires to be Draymond Green. And that's not a bad thing to aspire to because he's going to the Hall of Fame. Dylan Brooks doesn't do stupid things on the floor, I don't think. At least, I, I mean, he's making a name for himself because of the antics here. The theat- he's not in a big market. He's overshadowed on his own team by a couple of players, but he does get in the news. I mean, he, Patrick Beverly, you know, a marginal player, passed, but made made a name for himself being that kind of player. Yes, Todd? Is there a coach or a teammate of his that would say, like, you know, let's just make sure we're making it about the team and not about you? Would they have the guts to say that? Or Dylan has to have that edge. He has to play like that and be in LeBron's face to be at his best on the court. Well, if you were going to do it, you'd be Steve Kerr saying to Draymond Green, I don't think I'd be worried about Dylan Brooks as much. Yes, Marv? You know what, Todd? I'm going to disagree because they all talk on the Grizzlies. So I'm sure they're, like, egging him on, like, Hey, don't be afraid of him. Get in his face. Call him old or, you know, all that other stuff. I like it. I don't need the star player to do any talking. You know, Steph Curry doesn't do much talking. You got Draymond doing all the talking there. But with Memphis, Dylan Brooks wants to be the mouthpiece. Go ahead. I just like when you back it up. You won the game. Okay. Now let's see what happens in game three. And he is basically saying to LeBron, go out there, you know, spend a lot of energy. Try to get 40 on me or play a different game than what you would normally play. I understand this, but LeBron has seen this. He's seen it for 20 years, guys getting in his face. Oh, you're the chosen one. Oh, you're the king. Why don't you prove it to me? By the way, just to remind you, on this date, it was in uh, 2017, LeBron put up 41, 13, and 12. Cavaliers rallied from 25 down to beat the Pacers. You know, you forget these games where LeBron just takes over. He's done it to Boston. He did it to Detroit in big, big moments here. But yes, he is older, but he's still capable of those games. He's still a top five player. In, in my opinion, come playoff time, he's a guy that you want on the floor. Now, you can say Kawhi, you could say Kevin Durant, you can say, you know, quite a few players. Giannis, Embiid, uh, you know, the Joker. But he's in that conversation still at 38 with 20 years of mileage on those legs. So, yes, he is older than Dylan Brooks. Is he old? Dylan Brooks won't be playing basketball when he's 38. But the fact that LeBron is and he's trying to get in his head... I'm fine with that.